Thank you so much for coming to the ICT booth at the Manifesto Exhibition Centre here in Winneba. This is the first time since 1992 that any political party is setting up a Manifesto Exhibition booth where we are exhibiting the key highlights from all the thematic sectors of our Manifesto. It speaks to our willingness and desire to be transparent, to be open, to be accountable, even before we come into govern, govern, government. It's part of our social contract with the Ghanaian people that we will deliver to them an open and transparent government if voted into office, God willing, on the 7th of January 2025. As chairman for the subcommittee on ICT, digital economy and technology, some of the key things that we are speaking about is the fact that President Mahama is speaking about his One Million Coders project, where we're going to be training a, a million young people in our country in digital skills. We're going to be giving them coding, we're going to be giving them web development, we're going to be giving them system management, database management, several kinds of skill sets in, in, in the digital space. Because you need to have a cadre of well-qualified and trained technical people to be able to go to the next level of what we want to do. We've had our opposition make a promise, a similar promise, but they are just simply plagiarizing our promise. They don't understand what we're talking about. The One Million Coders project is not just about coding or training people in coding and giving them digital skills. It's about not just empowering them, but also creating the opportunities for them to be employed. And that's why you have the Digital Jobs Initiative, which is a policy that's going to have 300,000 young Ghanaian people with this employable skill after we've trained them, been enrolled onto the Digital Jobs Initiative, where we're going to see them begin to work in the formalization of the informal sector and, and being able to create the database that's needed for the Women's Development Bank that's going to be offering services to women. So you realize that our policies are all integrated. So it's not just, it's not just a, a, an eject policy, but these are well thought through policies. Again, you're going to have members or from that cater of 1 million coders who are going to be part of what we are calling the business process outsourcing and knowledge process outsourcing hub that Ghana is going to become. When President Mahama speaks about the 24-hour economy, we believe that ICT is one of the key places where you can actually build a 24-hour economy. Reason being that Ghana sits on GMT time. If you run three shifts of eight hours and you have a shift that runs from 8, 8 a.m. and it's supposed to run for eight hours, 8 a.m. is going to run till about 4 p.m. Right? So 8 to 12 is 4 hours, 4 to 12, uh, 12 to 4 is another 8 hours. So from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., you have one shift that's working. And basically what they're doing is they are servicing those who run in Europe. Europe is plus, plus 2, plus 3 GMT. And you also have those in Central, Af uh, the Central and Eastern African parts, which are also minus, plus 2, 3. So what you have is you have a cadre of... Of, of young Ghanaians working for eight hours doing BPOs and KPOs for companies in Europe and Central Central Europe and Southern Europe and same for Central and Southern Africa then you have the next shift that comes in from 4 p.m. to work till 8 p.m. now that 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. is now morning on the East Coast of, of the United States when you go to North Africa and South, South North America and South America that is now morning and so you have the 4 p.m. to 12 midnight shift that's now offering the same KPO and BPO services to companies in North and South America. Then you have another shift that's going to work from 12 midnight to 8 a.m. Now that shift is going to take care of Asia. From Dubai all the way to China and Japan, they are plus four to plus eight. So you realize that when it's midnight here, it's working hours over there. So when we, we talk about the 133 formula, and don't forget I gave you the 010 formula for boys boys on the street, but President Mahama is changing 010 to 133. So it's one job, three shifts, three people. So you realize that the same business process outsourcing in a, a center in an ICT hub that we've built or a KPO in a business center that we've built is going to continue working that same place three shifts three people so if you have a kpo or bpo center that employs 200 people or has a 200 capacity you have 600 people working in that same center you're taking young men and women off the street because don't forget you train them under 1 million coders and give them a skill so that's how we're working with this and apart from that we're going to build the ict park in dawa 
and we're going to have zonal parks like that across the region so you're going to have one in the middle belt you're going to have one along the coastal belt and you're also going to have one in the savannah region in the savannah belt up up north now what this ICT and, and uh, centers are going to be are they're going to become Africa's center for excellence president Mahama is talking a lot about agriculture and agro processing now agriculture has gone beyond just digging and planting we've got apps we've got tools that are technology driven innovation that are driven to help farmers determine what amount of water to give to the crop what's wrong with the crop how to treat the crop all of these are digital tools but many of these digital tools are in english now if you went to the Bono region for example a cashew farmer may not be able to use that app in english because he doesn't understand it you don't need to rewrite the whole script all you need to do is do ai and large language model learning what we call large language model learning to allow the app learn bono and be able to communicate in bono to the bono farmer who is farming cashew so you then take an existing uh, 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 application that exists your coders are able to write the script do the large language model learnings so you are teaching it Dagbani, you are teaching it Grushi, you are teaching it Gonja, you are teaching it Ga, you are teaching it Enzima, so that the cocoa farmer in the western region is able to use the same app. Now you need to have the centralized zones that are going to be doing the large language model learnings in those areas that are going to be doing cyber security, data protection. You've got a large oil enclave in the western region. You don't need to be having your, your cyber security professionals coming out from Accra all the way to Takradi. You can build an ICT hub in that area and enclave. But don't forget, it's all linked up. So from the one, one million coders, I have shown you how it's linked to the Digital Jobs Initiative. I've shown you how that is linked to the Women's World Banking to build a credit profile for, 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 for the beneficiaries of the Women's Bank. I've shown you how that is also linked in itself to the Business Process Outsourcing and KPO Initiative and how that's linked to the ICT hubs. Now apart from that, another key thing that we're going to be doing is for fintechs. The world is digital now. And we're not talking digitization like Baumia, one CD, two CD phones. No, we're talking big high tech, IoT, Internet of Things, the real big deal with 5G. Now, how do you do this? You need to be able to support your fintech economy to grow. And that's why we have a 50 million US dollar fintech fund that's going to aid the fintech space. We're going to create regulatory sandboxes. We're going to we're going to hold the hands of young Ghanaian fintechs, take them to angel investors, take them to venture capitals, but government itself is putting in the initial 50 million dollar will attract at least another 200 million dollars from multilateral agencies to boost and make the redundancy of our financial ecosystem one that is truly digital. Hello, my name is Lamisi Mavis Apeleva and I'm the Deputy Director for International Relations and Strategic Partnership at the NDC Youth Wing National. Today is a great day for all of us, for the people of the NDC, for the people of Ghana, because we are launching the Reset Manifesto. And over here, we have an exhibition booth, one of its kind, it has never happened, where a political party will launch its manifesto and have booths that would explain policies to people who want more details. So here, I am manning the 24-hour economy policy booth, and this 24-hour economy is a game changer, just like the populist bullet. It is here to change the game for us. We have issues of unemployment, especially among the youth. This 24-hour economy is telling us that in the whole day, we have 24 hours and we can take advantage of that. Just like the US is doing, just like China is doing. Taking advantage of that means that within the day, we don't need to just limit our work to eight hours. We can work three times within the day. We have different people working, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. So that a lot of us can have jobs. So this 24-hour economy, like I said, is the game changer. We are here to change the game. We are here to create employment. We are here to create lots of products and services so that we would have a lot to also export and gain more as a country. So I am urging everybody to support the NDC. Come, if you are around, come and speak to us in the booth and let us explain to you and give you a reason to vote for the NDC. Thank you. I'm <laughs> But the new school, 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 the new school,
if somebody is buying and they are working, it is from that source that they are also getting it. And the 24 hour economy, and you be able to get it. If you are a person, you can get it. 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 You can now, am I aware of this today? What is happening now is that there's a major threat to the national security. The job of the unemployment rate, it has risen to its highest in Ghana's history. As a person now, if you have a book on, and you need to purpose of a book, you don't have a book on, a company that has been in it, or for yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not enough for two years. But how about if we empower all those people? The young men, the mama, see, Obama, Amo, one million coders, IT skills. Ah, but my obit to me, Jina Hakana, no, let the best process outsourcing. But Jima, every man will be our monomy. You don't have to travel, but I work remotely from Ghana and be paid here as well. Yes. Okay. All the people can say, don't travel, security, somebody in the home. Because you have to say your security. You have to say only a 21,000. And you say, yeah, 24 hour economy. Not just a security. You say, yeah, more account. And you say, 21,000 a year. You're then multiplying by two. And by three. It's not just a 63,000. It's not 42,000 a year. There is an employee. I want to ask you. more jobs even for other people in other critical sectors. Getting there are two sides. Yes, there's a positive and a negative. The question I'd like to ask is that on million dollars in digging a hole in the name of a cathedral. If we have a government that will spend 15 million dollars in feeding athletes for just 18 days, if we have a government that can do courses, that tells you that their money is there, we can use it for the right cause. But a regime has decided to establish corruption as an institution and that is what is putting us where we are. So if we can even seal all those loopholes, that is more than enough to be able to provide for all these people. Don't when people are working, they are working to be paid. While they are working, they are also working in revenue. So that revenue is also going to supplement whatever needs to be coming from government or from other people to give to them as remunerations. Yes. Thank you very much.